Main man, right here. My, my What's up with it, bro? That's your camera. Yeah, camera. Huh? Yeah, get this one here. Get this one here. Oh, I'm in the picture too. Bow, bow, bow. What up? Got peanut in the picture. Oh, I know, know you, nigga. That's my cameraman. Yeah, I know you. That's my cameraman. That's my cameraman. What up, bro? That's my cameraman. Yeah, from the hood, I carry it. Yeah. Hey, come here. This is like we're going to be on the camera. We're going to make it happen soon. All right. We gonna make it happen. We're gonna spend up all the bullshit that everybody got going. See, they don't want to say he brought the crew to the city. Ah! They don't want to say. They want to play. <laughs> they want. Hey, hey, that's the, that's the rookie. They, they don't know no better. Yeah. But but all you got. Little Haggy Films, Cappuccino in New York. Back by popular demand. Get Cappuccino back on here. Get a part two to his interview. How you doing today, Cal? I'm alright, man. You know. Hey, Petey, come here, man. Come over, Petey. Come here. Just come here for a minute. Got to do it. Look, we'll get. I'm gonna get her. We got next interview gonna be with some girls. Man, we're gonna start off with this crazy girl right here. Alright, that's Petey. I'm Petey. Alright. Okay, Cal. Well, your first interview, you know, you got to told us you come off the east side out of the Pueblo. said you were raised around five nine grams of LA grams. So I gotta ask you the million dollar question. Were the grams a factor on the east side in the 1960s back then, in your opinion? Hell yeah. They black just like us. They, they was a the factor. You know, the blood came out of here before Crips. They was a the factor. Believe that. So y'all hear that the grams go back to the 1960s. OG cops opinion, they were a factor. All right, now, on your first interview, I, don't, I can't believe I, I forgot to ask you about your homegirls. Can you tell us something about your homegirls? Well, my homegirls out of this area? My homegirls out of this area, getting them over here. I don't let them really talk for themselves. Because I got a gang of homegirls, you know, that, that grow with us. They came up with Chesley. You know what I'm saying? They gave me the name Chesley Holes because it was all girls on the block. But I'm trying to start getting them down there so they can do a little conversation for themselves. Okay, but I still have to ask you about one homegirl in particular, and that's Sis. The only reason I'm asking about Sis is because I heard Buffalo say out his own mouth off camera that Sis was like a lady Don in the 60s. She basically raised P.D. Wack and OG Keter Rock. Would you agree with that? And she raised him because I brought him to her. And I, I introduced her to him. I put sis on the set. And once I put sis on the set, and she had a spot. So I, I told them, if you said you guys hanging out in the hood and shit, I'm going to take y'all over to sis house. So y'all can meet her, and y'all can start hanging out over there and looking out for her. So that's how that went. Got that now. Also from your first interview, you told a great story about one of your uncles who you said was a singer. Do you mind speaking to us and tell us a little more about your Uncle Dollar? Because he seemed very, very interesting. I mean, Uncle Dollar was a real cat, right? The song is The Black Water Spider. The bitch you go. I got some pictures of him, and uh, I'll show you guys the pictures and stuff. Then we'll flash him up over there. But my uncle was a hell of a cat, man. He taught me the game. Some of, the, some of the game, he always drove with Cadillac. I said, if I get big, I'm going to have me a Cadillac. So, you know, and uh, I didn't want to have no hoes because that wasn't was my game. My game, I was just a player. I just like women. Women is, is like art. You know, they artwork. So that's what kind of got me into women, my artwork. Okay. Can you repeat the name of that song again that you're on the The Black Little Spider. And bitch, you ain't gone. I really don't. <laughs> Alrighty, now, it's another billion dollar question, Triple OG Cap. You go way back, so this is big. Who influenced your cricket? 
Well, to be truthful, when I was young, you know, I watched you know, the gangster movies, L.A. Nairs and all, all that shit. I watched gangster movies. So gangster movies put me in the mood that I, when, I, when I get big, man, I want to have my own gang. I want to have my own mob. I want to go in stores and take stuff and, and let them know, hey, I run this shit. You got to, you don't know, give it to me, I'm going to shut you down. So really, if, if the cat that called me the, the, the Spain, this dude named Priest. You know, his real name is, is Bob, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, he, he brought that crippling to me, and he had told me, this is in 69, he told me, he said, man, let's, let's be crips. I'm like, who? I said, man, I ain't trying to be no motherfucking crip, a gangster, nigga, and I ain't from any trade gangster. Nigga, I'm a legit gangster, you know what I'm saying? So, I kind of like the word, the word crip because when I told him, man, we go crip, we got to look out for the old people, if an old lady can get the stool, got to help me put her stuff in the car. We got to look out for her, can't nobody, none of nobody black. And we got to look out for our neighborhood. That's what crippling that all that started all about. You know, looking out for you know, the neighborhood, your mom, my mom, the grannies and all that stuff. And everybody took it to another level. All right. So, I see you have Malcolm X hats and t-shirts behind you. I just wanted to ask you this question. Do you think that the assassination of people like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, did that play a rise? Did that play a part in the rise of the Bloods and the Crips, in your opinion? No, 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 not really because Malcolm X is different from Martin Luther King. Malcolm X, I'm up under Malcolm X before I can be up under Martin Luther King. Only reason why I say that, because my mother the king wanted to get you, let you get beat down, your parents, the dogs, these motherfuckers up. Hey, hey, we got to be humble. Humble my ass, man, you know what I'm saying? Malcolm X was with the business. And that's why they assassinated Malcolm X, because he was really with the business. And I love Malcolm X to the fullest. You know, if I got to be up under anybody's jurisdiction, it would be Malcolm X. It would be Martin Luther King. But I love him, don't get me wrong, because he did great things for us also. I just didn't like watching the, the show when the German Shepherd was biting your mamas up and beating you up and he wants you to be cool. That ain't a time to be cool. If a nigga, if a nigga did anything to my mama, be cool, they ain't gonna get it. You know. Okay, fans. So, I'm gonna ask you this question. Do you think about Malcolm X? You can look at the t-shirt behind Cappuccino. Yeah. You'll see the or the bullet. Uh, Look that up on YouTube, listen to that speech. It's a great Malcolm X speech from 1964. Yeah. Okay, Legend Cap. I want to ask you about somebody you told me about off camera, and I also heard Ice T speak about him in his interview he did with Big U. And that's a guy, he goes by the name Bones or Jaw Bones. Do you know him? Yeah. Do, can you tell us a little something about him? Yeah, that's my boy, the Peekers, man. So I call him Jaw Bone because he break the jaw. You know, the nigga was real vicious. You know that martial arts and shit real good. And, uh, but, you know, that's, that, that, that's my, that was my main man at the time. He still is. He's like my bodyguard, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and, you know, he took me up to Ice-T spot. Ice T was up, up the way. He, he he had the Porsche shop, the Porsche car lot really. And uh, I went up there, you know, to meet him and stuff. We was all cool. Then I've been knowing him for a long time. I made him a clock and all that stuff, but I was locked up and shot it to him. I've been trying to holler at him lately. I just I ain't got no response from him yet, but I'm waiting to holler at him soon. Okay. You wanted to, only a G can tell us this, so I'm gonna ask. What were some of the hangout spots for the Triple OGs in the 1970s? Well, we called Tiff Ave the Dime. Tiff Ave to me created all the friction around the hood. You know what I'm saying? Because it was there before. It had Tiff Ave and Hyde Park. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 I mean, a lot of people live on that block. A lot of females, a lot of homies, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them not here today, some of the females not here today. But Tenth Avenue, in my generation, you couldn't walk down Tenth Avenue if you wasn't from that hood. 
period. So, the 10th album was basically all this crap in the 1970s. All the time. Alright, so. Now, this is, I want to ask you about one of the businessmen for your neighborhood. He's well known for being a writer from the rolling 60s. But I want to speak about his business side, and that's OG Kitara. I want to ask you, do you know anything about his shoe store that he had on Florence back in the 90s? Oh, yeah, it was cool. I used to go down there and shit, you know. The president came one time, we told the president, don't bring no police with you. If you do, you can't come. So he didn't bring no police, we had motherfuckers on each corner. He didn't bring no police, he came by himself. You know, that was it, one of his boys. And I got the pictures and stuff of him at the thing. Keto Rock, Keto Rock was trying to do good. It was all up under Maxine Waters, you know. So she was making sure that, you know, the blacks had some. There's a lot of homies that had something before no disrespect to Nipsey. But it's a lot of homies that had stuff before Nipsey got even on the scene. You know what I'm saying? But I respect what he did as a young kid. You know what I'm saying? I, that was sharp for him. He did what he did. I just hate what happened to him happened, you know. Okay, so it's another question only the Triple OG can tell us. Sitting at a park in the 1970s, but not just the gang relations. Talk about the racial relations. I heard you say off camera that you guys were the reason you made you help make it made it possible for blacks to go up in that park. What right. do you mean by that? This is real talk, bro. We was young. I had a German Shepherd named Rex. He's a dog. And we used to try to go to the park. We couldn't go to the park. They were in the city, they the run aside there, there were Mexicans, whites, blacks couldn't come and sit in another park in the, in the 70s. Period. So one week we posse up and we wanted to go up there. You know, me, Black Mac, it was like 40 of us. Odie Shaw. You know what I'm saying? We all went up there and uh, it was some Mexicans playing basketball. And uh, Black Mac told me, and hey, once you grab a ball and, and run with it, because they can't, they wouldn't catch you no way. So we got the ball from the Mexicans and uh, you know they started chasing us. So we went down to the alley and we stopped, we started squabbling with them. So we started squabbling with the Mexicans and the dog was tearing the motherfuckers apart. And uh, after we did that, we kept up there every other week, and we did that. So after that, they just started us coming to the park. They started us coming to, you know, everything. You know, the swimming, all that. We couldn't do nothing at first. And um, then we, the, the line, we started telling blacks, y'all need to come up to the park. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you can't go up there. Yeah, you can. We made it happen so they can go up there. And anybody that been around and keep it P.I., they know what I'm talking about. I just want to ask you, why we stay, we stay in the 70s? Can you tell us something about the A trays and the rolling 60s got along? Uh, man, we were all Crips. See, Crips didn't fight Crips when I came up. You know, we was all, we was all part of, you would be happy to be a Crip than any other set. We can have our rags hanging out, we can hang them on your car antenna. We go in their hood, when they have a party, and we go in their hood, we bring our crib nuts, they kick it with our crib nuts, and we kick it with theirs. And that's how the cribbing was. It, it wasn't no fight crips fighting crips. We fight with our enemies, was the police, and the bloods. That was all the enemies. Mexicans, Orientals, Japanese, you know, the whites, and shit like that. But crips didn't fight crips when I came up. Were there any A-trades that you personally had love for or still have love for? I, 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 I got love for, it's just a lot of them. Like, you know, Big Brownie, you know, Devil, Ray Trey, you know, Skull. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's, there's many more. But them the three that I really got a lot of love for because I had to do something for, 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 for the Devil. I'm going to get him out here so he can explain all that to you, what happened to him and, and how I saved his life. You know what I'm saying? And he did save mines one time. Because I was on Western in the 80s. I said, look, there's a little, little cafe there on Western. And 
I had pulled up to get me something to eat. I was in my lack at uh, about eight, nine, eight trays. This one, they just, they start tripping. Right. But they, uh, you know, they, they was, they was all, I was still ordering my food. I had a Chrome 357 on me, so I wasn't even tripping on none of that. Period. You walk up with me, I'm gonna lay your ass out. I don't give a fuck who you are. So, they was, you know, they was, you know, they was trying to surround you and all that shit. And devil pulls up. He like, man, what you niggas doing out here, man? He said, I know y'all ain't finna fuck with cousin the lack right there. Yo, we, we, we ain't seen any duty. Uh, that's how me and devil got to be real tight. Then he wind up in the pen with me, and I made him out of one of my bodyguards. You know what I'm saying? And so he, he you know, like I say. It was a trip, man. When I went to the pen, came back, I hit Chris like Chris. I didn't believe that. I didn't know what, 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 what was that about. Okay. Cap, this is a, it's a gang that's not known worldwide or even maybe the statewide. But within this area, they're very, very known, very, very popular. You can give us some history on them. That's the five, six sentences. Uh, <laughs> really, five, six cylinders is really part of six up. Because a lot of them were, were sixties, but they stayed on, on 50, 56. So Ice T and all of them, they was trying to make a name for themselves. That's why he made the song Seneca. Ice T original for five, six. Wait, I, gotta, I gotta quote you on this. So you, that's who you put Ice T too? A five six syndicate? Ice T is the original for five six syndicate. Wow, that's, yeah. that's big. You know, he, 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 with, with the syndicates, you know, it's a couple of cats, you know, my boy Pink, and you know. It's a lot of over there. one of the cat, I can't remember the name, but he played he played for the 49ers and he was a five six syndicate, they killed him. But the Seneca's is real close, was real close to the 6 0. That's the only set the 60s never had a fight with. They had a fight with every set except the 5 6 Seneca. Because they was part of us. We, we all grew up together. But other than that, when gang bangers start fighting and shit, we had a fight with every group set. I mean, you know, not in our days. As the years changed, it, it, everything changed. That's when, you know, the they Crips start fighting Crips. I, I was in the pen. I couldn't even understand that. A lot of five six syndicates eventually turned six zero. In your opinion, a lot of five six syndicates they, they they were six zero. They turned five they, six they, they, they turned five six syndicates because they live on the other side of us, right? right? right. So we I, we can tell them, and y'all can get your own set together, and they did that. Right. And the five six syndicates is really the closest set to six zero than it is. You know what I'm saying? That's the only set that you they haven't had a fight with. They had a fight with every seven set for five six syndicates. So you would say they're five six syndicate hustlers or five six syndicate crips in your opinion? I mean, you know, basically everybody was a start off hustling. You know, everybody started hustling, you know, until you know until you, you got into that organization, the word crip. Right, right, right. Okay. I wanna I'll stay in the seventies because I seem to be where it's at. This is kinda lighthearted. Can you just tell us something about the fashion from back then? Like uh -huh. you guys dressed, I always hear about the ace, the, what is the ace deuce or ace deuce? If you, a real crip in them days, they were ace deuces, they cut slacks on, high boy shirts, nicknicks, rollers, and all that. You know what I'm saying? We wear vistas and, 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 and um, um, easy walkers. You know what I'm saying? We stayed sharp, crip stayed sharp. If, if you if you can tell a crip from any other, any other game, you know, not to say the bloods and say sharp, but they were different dress from us. We used to say short maxi leather coat, waistline leather coat, you know what I'm saying? And uh, well, that's, that's how it went, man. We stayed short, man. We, it wasn't running around sagging your pants. Sagging pants came from the hobos off the train. Blue and red rags came from the Crips and Cowboys. Drive-bys came from L.A. and We didn't start none of that shit. So everybody think, oh, you guys started drive by just we ain't started that shit. You know what I'm saying? They just keep it P.I. You know what I'm saying? We watched all that shit on the internet box. You know what I'm saying? So to say that, you know, sagging your pants and all that shit, that comes from the motherfucker on the tracks, all hope over this. And now, you know, then you got 
nine years old, like I say, they watch the Y'all Star the Crips. No, red and blue rags start from any of the cowboys. See, they started from us. Drive-bys didn't even start from us. You know, the Caucasian and white man created all that shit. And then if you blame us, if, if we throw a rock while we're driving by, we like to get pulled over. You know?